Hello everybody. We are going to talk about an amazing Augustan poet, Alexander Pope. Do you know Alexander Pope had influence over one whole century in England? Entire 18th century. And he was a neoclassical poet. Born in the year of the glorious revolution. Which is that year? 1688. He was born in London. Oh, poor Alexander Pope. He had a lot of physical ailments. He was almost an invalid. And he had an uneven education. And do you know, he deliberately misinterpreted his biographical facts. He spread wrong stories about himself. His character was weird. And he was a major satirist. Because of his physical problems and deformity, he was sensitive to insult. He was very paranoid. This led him to attack his enemies. He did not go to college or university and get a proper education. He was largely self-taught. And his earliest poem came in 1709. Hey, that was the year in which Nicholas Rowe brought out the first edition, 18th century edition of Shakespeare also. 1709, the year in which Tatler was started. That year, Alexander Pope published his pastorals. It's a group of four poems published by Jacob Tonson, who was Pope's friend. Jacob Tonson published this poem in Miscellanies. In Pastorals, there is a prefatory essay called Discourse on Pastoral Poetry, written by Pope, that is very famous. At this time, Pope was moving in London circles. He came to know uh, Whigs of London, especially Addison. Later, you know what happened? Some of Addison's friends attacked Pope. And Pope attacked Addison. That came later. Towards the end of his career. That attack. That was an epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot. Anyway, Pope was now moving in Whig circles. And very soon he will uh, quarrel with his Whig friends and move to Tory circles also. After pastorals came in 1709, in 1711 came Essay on Criticism. This was a verse epistle on how writers and critics should perform in this age of commerce. This was the age when literature, writing, poetry etc. became professions. People were making money out of it. Not poor Alexander Pope but others. There were hack writers. Grub Street hacks, you might know. Fake writers who pretended to be great writers. Some people will say, I am a hack poet. Oh, sorry, hack teacher. <laughs> because all, are, all of us YouTube teachers are not like university professors. With little knowledge we are teaching. Na? We should not be do, doing that. We should really study, have true scholarship. Read original texts. Don't be Grub Street teachers. I am also trying. You should also try. We should have real knowledge. Read original works. Think deeply. Follow central university standards. Even though you are learning from home. Or teaching from home. So, I was talking about essay on criticism. Essay on criticism is about how in this age of commerce, writers and critics should behave and write. This is a very important text of neoclassicism and essay on criticism has so many quotable quotes. Lines of essay on criticism are quoted always. A little learning is a dangerous thing. To err is human but to forgive divine, you know, statements like that. Essay on criticism is in three parts. and. It is an essay on criticism that Pope famously said, follow nature. What do you mean by that? Follow human nature. 
Human nature has already been depicted by classical masters. Follow that. Imitate the masters. Don't write originally. Imitation was a virtue in Pope's time, in the neoclassical period. And when Pope said, follow nature, follow human nature, Rousseau said, hello, hello, where are you going? Return to nature. That means return to external nature, trees, plants, mountains, that, that nature. Pope said, follow nature. Rousseau said, return to nature. <laughs> so interesting. And this was 1711, okay. 1712, make what happened in 1712? Pope wrote three can, sorry, two cantos only. Pope wrote two cantos of the rape of the lock. The rape of the lock first came in two cantos. It is a mock heroic poem. It was Pope's friend John Carroll who asked the Pope, Are Pope, write something. You have these Roman Catholic friends. Roman Catholic families, they are quarreling among themselves. Arabella Farmer's family is quarreling with Lord Peter's family. Are Pope, write something to, you know, solve their quarrel. That who said? Pope's friend John Carroll said. Pope said, Theek hai, I will write. And he wrote The Rape of the Lock. Where Arabella Farmer is coming as Belinda. Lord Peter is coming as Baron. They are secretly in love with each other. Their families don't know. But something happens. Lord Peter cuts off a lock of hair from Belinda's hair. Rape of the lock means theft of the lock. Rape means theft. It was based on some continental text. Vida wrote game of chess. Tassoni wrote Sekia Rapita or Rape of the Bucket. It's about the theft of a bucket of all things. You know, it happens in our hostels, etc. Rape of the Bucket. Somebody stole somebody else's bucket. <laughs> this is not that kind of bucket. It's a huge bucket in the center of a town that is stolen by enemies. Big deal. And then Rape of the Lock was rewritten in 1714 in five cantos. Mock epic. That means what? A trivial incident like one man cutting off a lock of hair from a lady's head. It's treated in an epic style, like a battle. These aristocrats in London at this time, all night they will party every day. <laughs> Not only for New Year or Christmas. And then they will come and sleep till noon. And they will get, again get up, dress elaborately for hours. By midnight only their dressing will be over. Oh my God. And then again they will go to party. This is how Belinda is. And in the second edition of 1714, Rape of the Lock second edition, Pope introduced supernatural machinery. Some supernatural creatures <laughs> to make fun of a sect of Christians called the Rosicrucians. The Rosicrucians were a secret sect of the Christians at that time who believed that the whole universe is populated by four kinds of supernatural beings the sylphs, the gnomes, the nymphs, and the salamanders. What a weird belief! And they believed that beautiful women after their death become sills. The whole of fifth, uh, the five canto wala rape of the log, the 1714 edition rape of the log is full of sills. Ariel is the sylph who is guarding Belinda's lock of hair. Belinda's earrings are being guarded by Brilliant. Belinda's watch is being uh, guarded by Momentilla, etc. And in the third canto of Rape of the Lock, the lock of hair is cut by the Baron. L so much confusion. It's like battle, described like battle. Pope, in the third edition of 1717, added another speech. 
Clarissa's speech. It's very famous. So this is the mock epic, The Rape of the Lock. 17, 12 and 17, 14. In between one year is there 17, 13. What happened in that year? Bolo. In 1713, Pope wrote another poem about the place where he was living from London. They had moved to this place. This is a topographical poem. Tell me the name of the poem. Windsor Forest. Pope wrote Windsor Forest. It's a royalist pastoral. And then after that, 1713, this is at this time, Pope started, he left his wig friends and started moving in Tory circles. And thus he became part of Scribblerus Club of Jonathan Swift. Scribblerus Club. And at this time, Pope began more writing. He became one of the first professional poets. And he next wrote a translation of Homer. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, Pope took and translated. He had great hopes. He thought, I will be a great poet translating it. But this translation is faulty. <laughs> Mistakes were there. In 1717, the same year in which he published the third canto of Rape of the Lock, a collected works of Pope is published. Collected works, 1717. In this book, there were important poems like Eloisa to Abelard. It was at this time that Pope moved to another place, a little far from London and Windsor Forest. That place is called Twickenham. You won't believe what Pope did there. Pope engaged in horticulture. That means he created his own garden. And he created a grotto. Grotto is a shell-lined cave. Wow, he did so many things other than writing satires. Wow. And there, another important thing that he did was to sit and attack his enemies through his satires. <laughs> that is why he came to be called the Wasp of Twickenham. Wasp. Like a bee comes and stings you. Pope's satires gave him the name the Wasp of Twickenham. And in 1725, he brought out edition of a wonderful great writer. Tell me the name. 1725, Pope brought out his edition of Shakespeare. That also was a big project, but it was faulty. There were mistakes. There was a famous Shakespearean critic called Louis Theobald. Mm. He attacked the Pope for writing this edition of Shakespeare, for bringing out this edition of Shakespeare. Louis Theobald hated this Pope's work and he wrote a book against Pope saying, Shakespeare restored. The Shakespeare that Pope destroyed, Louis Theobald restored. So now, do you think it is wise for Th Louis Theobald to hurt a cobra like Alexander Pope? <laughs> no, because later Alexander Pope made him immortal, made Louis Theobald immortal by attacking him in the Dunciad. Louis Theobald got his reply. Louis Theobald was attacked by Pope in the Dunciad, but that is another story. Before that, there are a few other works. Alexander Pope modelled on Perihapsus or on the sublime by Longinus. On the sublime by Longinus is about the art of elevation in poetry. Writing in a great style that is called sublimity. Against that, Alexander Pope wrote Peribathos. Peribathos means the art of sinking in poetry. It's about bad poetry. Peribathos. Bathos becomes a, a concept in writing, okay? Bad writing. And then Pope planned his magnum opus in four parts. Don't worry, only three parts have been written. So, so much less to study. 
What are the three parts of his magnum opus, Essay on Man, published in 1733-34? The Dunciad and Moral Essays. The Dunciad was first published in 1728 in three parts, attacking Louis Theobald. Later rewritten in 1743 in four parts, attacking Kali Sibar. Moral essays is the third part of his magnum opus. Let us look at them in a little more detail. Essay on man is about the great chain of being. What is the great chain of being? Tell me guys. The great chain of being is the idea that everything in the universe from God, then angels, then fallen angels, then man, then mineral, animals, then minerals, everything in this universe is arranged in a hierarchical order. Great chain of being. Yes, some of you already know that the great chain of being is also a book by Arthur Lovejoy. Wonderful. And then, essay on man, remember, is addressed to Henry St. John, Viscount Bolingbroke. It is in four epistles. The Dunciad, the second part of his magnum opus. First attacked Louis Theobald, then attacked Collie Sibba. What happens here is Goddess Dullness is choosing Bayes, B A Y S, that is Collie Sibber as her successor. This is similar to Dryden's Mac Flecknoe. And then came Moral Essays. Moral Essays is also in four parts, verse epistles in four parts, addressed to several persons. And after Moral Essays, he wrote Imitations of Horace, Satires it is. One of his last works was Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot, which is a justification of Pope's satiric art. In Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnot, there is a famous attack on Addison as Atticus and on Lord Hervey as Sporus. <laughs> These are all caustic satires on his enemies. Pope died in the year 1744. Very important in the contributions of Pope is his perfecting of the heroic couplet and his valorization or praise of wit and human nature. He did that in essay on criticism and his dictum follow nature. Pope advocated the use of poetic diction and this was later replied to by William Wordsworth. When Wordsworth said, there is essentially no difference between the poetry, the language of poetry and the language of prose. Whereas Alexander Pope believed that poetry should be written in a high language or poetic diction. Pope was the high priest of neoclassicism. Please read some of his poems. They are brilliant. He was an excellent writer of heroic couplets. Will you read them, those poems? Wonderful. Thank you. So, until the next video, you can read on your own, study, revise and take another step towards becoming true scholars. I am there with you to help in every way I can. Until then, bye bye guys.